Thank you all for coming today. I know there's lots of other interesting talks, um, but mine has a buzzword in the title. So I'm sure that lured you here. And I want to say hi to my girls that are watching at home. Um, here's your little hedgehog, by the way. So uh, talking about games today, and um, I, I really like this quote. Um, I'm constantly reminded about trying to have the heart of a child because I have two little kids at home, and it's kind of hard not to. But I, this, this really struck me as cool. And if you don't know who uh, wrote this quote, um, it's, it's the guy that created this game. And that game had a huge impact on my life. Um, and uh, you know, games really are, are, are important. Um, they're fun. Uh, obviously, we like to play them, um, play video games, play card games. Um, they are uh, they're really important, I think. Uh, they're an important part of socialization with people. Um, and, and really, they're, they're a part of our everyday life. And uh, I just want to show this GIF because I like it. I can watch this all day long. Um, yeah, so uh, first off here, we're going to go over uh, what is a game? Um, just the very basics. So a, a game is, is, is a voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. And I, I ripped off this quote from this great book by Jay McGonigal called Reality is Broken. And if you're at all interested in gaming or game techniques or game theory, I highly suggest you check out this book. And uh, in that book, uh, Jane kind of defines things as the game of golf. Um, when you think about it, golf would be a whole lot easier. And I, by the way, this was one of my least favorite Nintendo games. I just didn't like it at all. Um, it would be a whole lot easier if you just took the ball, walked down the course, and dropped it in the hole. Uh, but with the game of golf, you, you create these unnecessary obstacles um, to uh, prevent you from getting the ball in the hole. So Jane goes a little bit further with, with the game uh, set up here, and she, she applies four rules to creating a proper game. So you have to have a goal, of course, in golf, that's getting the ball in the hole. Uh, rules, uh, things like you can't pick it up, uh, you can't use a hockey stick to hit it, all that kind of good stuff. You also need a feedback system where people can see how they're doing to progress to get to that, that goal state. And you have to allow voluntary participation. So people have to choose to play the game and can stop and start anytime they want to. So. Um, Playground games. I volunteer at my daughter's school, and this picture actually happened there a couple weeks ago. Some goats got loose. <laughs> and school was actually in session when this happened, and the cops had to come and uh, rope the goats, uh, which is a game in and of itself. But anyways, on the playground, uh, after I volunteer in the classroom, I go outside and I play freeze tag a lot. The kids, second graders, love playing freeze tag. So in freeze tag, the goal of the game, when I'm it, which I'm always it, is I have to run around and tag people to freeze them. And there's rules. People that haven't been frozen can go around and unfreeze people. So that also provides me a feedback state where I can look around the playground and be like, oh my gosh, they keep unfreezing each other. And this is horrible because <laughs> I'm running around so much. And I can voluntarily decide to stop playing at any time because I'm out of breath. So that's, that's games. Now gamification, the big buzzword. So when I think of this word, I kind of get like this uh, <laughs> because it's just, it's really kind of played out. Uh, you know, this was a big word in the industry years ago. And, uh, but yeah, and I'm giving a talk about it now, which is so funny. So gamification is, is, is a pretty big thing. It's all around us. You pull up the, I, I searched the plugin directory and you can even see Woo has a, a gamification plugin. I'm not really sure what it does, but it's, it's all around us. Um, and also uh, badges are everywhere. Like I got this Fitbit. Um, and the first day I wore it, I think I walked like 10 steps, and all of a sudden my email inbox had like three emails with badges in it. And it's just, it's like overkill. Um, so it's, it's everywhere, and I think it's done poorly quite often. So I really like this quote. Um, this guy's name is Yukai Chao, and he, he wrote a book about gamification, and I think he calls himself a gamification expert. Uh, but gamification is the craft of deriving fun and engaging elements found typically in games and thoughtfully applying them to real world productive activities. So the key word there I think is thoughtfully. Uh, you can't just take badges or a leaderboard and just toss it up on anything and expect that to be an engaging experience. Um, and, and you know gamification really is, is trying to drive people to a goal state. So in the game there's a goal that they want to achieve but also you have a goal for them, whether that's coming back and playing your game often, uh, filling out a form on your website for a lead. You can you know, thoughtfully apply these game techniques to get people to the goal state you want. So he wrote this book called Actionable Gamification. And in there, he, had, he created this framework called Octalysis, which I think is funny. Uh, and it made me think of Bloopy or Blooper, whatever that little squid thing is in Super Mario. 
but um, it's like the top one you can't see. But it's, uh, he calls them eight core drives in this Octalysis framework. The first one, which you can't see, is epic meaning. Um, but the rest of these here, they're, they're kind of they're kind of self-explanatory, but essentially uh, he thinks that there's these eight core drives that kind of drive people to do anything in life. Um, and uh, the book's pretty interesting. He goes through a lot of uh, well-known websites like LinkedIn, Facebook, um, and talks about how their design really maps to these, these game theories. So uh, you should check that out if you're interested in this subject. So back to second grade. Um, when I'm in the classroom, uh, I help out during reading. Uh, in, the, in the classroom for second grade, which is really fun. And uh, there's different centers set up around the classroom, and there's a lot of cool things. They have like iPads that they get to play games on and do multimedia stuff, and laptops. And then there's my station, and my station's kind of lame. It's a sheet of paper with like 10 words on it, and what the kids are supposed to do is choose a word on that list and write it three times, uh, and then write a sentence using that word, and draw a picture, and it's, it's really not that fun. So usually, there, you know, there's some kids that just come to my table and sit there and just don't work at all, and they want to go play iPad. So one day I thought to myself, um, you know, I think, I'm, I think I can gamify the system. So my goal state was to get them to actually do their work. And I, I said to this one little girl, you know, I bet you can't think of the word that I am thinking of on this list. And of course, I didn't actually have a word in my head. I was just like, let's see if this works. And all of a sudden, she was immediately engaged. She started guessing words off the list. And, like on the third guess, I was like, you got it, you got it right. And she was, she was like stoked. <laughs> and, and it was, it was it's amazing. Uh, you can apply these techniques anywhere in life. So that leads us to the dog food game, level one, three. Um, I work at this awesome company with all these beautiful, amazing people. And let's play a quick game, try to find me. <laughs> My hair's a little bit longer, but uh, anyways. Um, the past six or seven months or so, I've been working on part of the Calypso project, which was released last week, specifically the post editor. Um, it's been an amazingly fun project, and uh, you could do a whole talk just around this, and I would love to talk to you about it, but we're talking about games today. Um, so we were having a, a meeting about six months ago, I think it was in July, we're having a, a Google Hangout or something. and. We're like, you know, we really need to get people to, to use this internally, to test it out for us. Uh, what, what should we do? Um, and in the past, you know, people, uh, they'll post and say, hey, we got this new product, can you test it out and see if you can find any bugs and let us know about it. So I was, I was sitting there in the, in the talk and like, oh, what should we do, what should we do? And, and, uh, and you know, my core drives are going, you know, like I'm trying to be creative and, and, uh, and come up with this great idea. And all of a sudden it's like, let's, let's create a game. Of course, let's gamify this thing. So going back to the basic tenets of what makes up a game, uh, the obstacle of this game would be for people to use this, this beta editor, this, this beta software. And uh, many of you know at Automatic, we write a lot of blog posts internally. Um, instead of using email, if we want to communicate something out to a large group of people, we write a blog post. And we have a lot of different ways to do that. We have the, the P2 theme, which gets used quite a bit. Uh, some folks use WP Admin, and so we're asking people to step out of their daily routine and use this, this new system that's not quite perfect yet, so that's the obstacle. And our, our goal state as the, the product team was to get people to use the editor to find bugs. So the goal for them, of course, is to get points. Um, so uh, we were going to give people a point for every time they use the, the, the editor, and the way we did that was with a little kind of uh, like a pixel tracking tool that we have internally. So it's like, yeah, we could totally do that. But a bigger part of this was to actually get people to find bugs and to report them, because um, that's really the biggest value for us, to have issues weeded out so we can get them fixed before we release this. So if someone found a bug, we were going to give them two points. And we'd create a feedback system. We'd have like a really simple leaderboard so people could see where they rank amongst other players in the company. And people could play whenever they want, right? They could choose to make a post to the new editor. They could try to find a bug. But if they didn't feel like taking the time out of their, their day, out of their routine, they could go back and use P2 or, or WP Admin. So with that, that was the creation of the dog food game. And uh, dog food, I think it's a pretty well-known term. Uh, I worked at Microsoft in a prior lifetime. And dog fooding was a big thing there. Uh, I was there during the Office XP and Windows XP days. And, uh, we would try to roll out that software to a certain percentage of users of the company. So it's, you eat your own dog food and you find bugs. Typically at Microsoft, the finding bug thing didn't work out too well, though. 
So, um, like any good idea, if you bring it up in a meeting like that, you are immediately the one that gets to build it, right? Everybody's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Go for it. You get to do it. Um, so when I, uh, that night, I think I was watching baseball, I was watching the Seattle Mariners lose again, and uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to build this thing, and I went to my, my favorite tools. So I love to write JavaScript um, for little quick, simple things like this. I like little quick, simple integrations and hacks. I love to use Node and Express. Um, Express is uh, kind of a very simple uh, MVC, model view controller type system. Uh, it's a lot like Sinatra and Ruby. Um, and I use Jade uh, as a templating system. But the big question to me was data persistence, right? We need to track some things about the players in our game. So each player, um, we need to know how many times they've created an issue on GitHub and how many times they've made a post using the new editor. So again, two points when they create an issue on GitHub and one point when they actually create a post. So typically in a Node project, you're going to reach for a tool like Mongo or uh, something like Redis, uh, like a new SQL database, and there's lots of packages out there that make this really easy to do. And I started to do that, but then, you know, again, I was like, yeah, I could do that, but that's just, that's not in the spirit of this game. This game's about dog fooding. This is the dog food game, right? So, of course, I should use WordPress for this game, for the data layer. Um, and a pretty simple idea, each player was going to be a, a post on a blog, and I could track their score with that and use the, the REST API to make this happen. Um, so fortunately, much like these other tools uh, that you could use to interface with, with Mongo or, or Redis, there is a, a great node library called WPCOMJS that Automatic provides. And it's a wrapper for <clears throat> excuse me, the, the WordPress.com API. So along the right side of the page there, you can see um, all these endpoints. And you can drill down and, and read about the documentation. But WPCOMJS makes it pretty simple to interface with any of those. Um, another thing I wanted to point out here for anybody that's going to play with the API at all, uh, is the developer console. And that's a, it's a great tool that you can actually go through and see all the endpoints, and you can interact with them. Um, so here's a, a little screenshot of, of me going through and retrieving posts from the, the blog that I used to, to store the scores for this game. So you can change the site, you can change the query parameters, and then you can interactively go through and look at the response stream. So even before you write a single line of code, you can go in here and kind of conceptualize how you want to work with the API, whether it's making posts or adding categories, whatever you want to do. So super slick. So um, one big thing with the API, uh, to interact with it for certain endpoints, to do things like create posts, you have to be authenticated. And the WordPress.com API uses OAuth to, to handle that. So, Getting an OAuth token um, in the context of this game was pretty simple. Uh, since I'm not going to be validating uh, users or asking them for permission to post to their blogs, I just created a single use token. Um, that process is kind of convoluted and takes a little bit of time. And I'm not going to stand up here and talk about it because it's boring. But I do have a post up on my blog about it. And we also have uh, another example application and another automatic repository that has a really simple node application that helps you get an OAuth token really quickly. So check out the blog post, um, or uh, come find me, and we can make tokens together. It's a lot of fun. So now we're going to go to the boss level, some, look at some code, and, and potentially do a live demo if, if the gods smile on me today. So um, instead of using the, the exact game that we used for, for the post editor, I decided to mix it up a little bit for this presentation. So I really like Chewbacca. He's my favorite character. And, and this, is, this, this, of course, is like relevant right now with Star Wars coming up. So <laughs> earlier this week, uh, I had this idea uh, of creating a, a, a simple blog called Sounds Chewy. Um, I'm sure you've seen uh, this thing on the internet. If you haven't, it's awesome. I'll try to get close enough where you can hear it. It's a toilet paper roll. <laughs> I, this makes me so happy. And, and part of it, and it, people automatic know this, I, I have a hidden talent, and, and it's being able to Chewbacca. <laughs> So I have a whole other flash talk specifically about how to sound like Chewbacca, too. So, uh, so, for, the, so for this game, I decided that, that 
my blog is going to be about collecting cool Chewbacca videos, things that sound chewy in real life because they need to be documented for the greater good of humanity. <laughs> so whenever someone creates a post on Sounds Chewy, they get a point. And Sounds Chewy has a GitHub repository like any good open source project. And if someone finds a bug with Sounds Chewy, they get two points. So the code for Sounds, the Sounds Chewy game uh, is located on my GitHub profile under dog food. And you can see, it's an old screenshot, but if you go look, you can see how I did a lot of this last night. Uh, so really, the way this thing works, uh, the leaderboard for Sounds Chewy, um, there is a blog on WordPress.com, and it's kind of hard to see, but the blog's called Dog Food Game. It doesn't really matter. It's a private blog. Nobody's ever going to see this thing. All it is there for is to simply have some posts. And the post, title, or the post slug and title is the, the username on WordPress.com. And you can see the content underneath there. So you can see Matt, and it has 10, and I think I have another slide. So it has 10, and then a pipe, and a zero. So the first number is the number of posts that Matt has made to Sounds Chewy. Now, Matt has not made a post to Sounds Chewy, but it would be a lot cooler if he did. But just work with me here. And uh, zero, he has reported no bugs. So um, this, is where, this is how I'm persisting the data for this leaderboard. And we're going to get into how that's done here shortly. Um, so how this actually works, how do we report and send signals to our little app that we need to record points? Well, uh, GitHub in the repositories, you have this notion of webhooks. Um, you know, webhooks are, are pretty common around all web services. But GitHubs are, are fairly robust. And you can, um, for this particular one, I've told GitHub, hey, anytime someone does anything with an issue on this repository, send that information to this address. Um, and this little example app we're running is up on Heroku right now. So whenever someone creates an issue, it's going to send a JSON payload with all the details about that, that issue there. Likewise, on WordPress.com, there's a plugin uh, for webhooks. And so anytime uh, on, on soundschewy.com, when a post is made, it sends a ping to a webhook with the author's name. So that's how we can, can build out our leaderboard. So here's the simple leaderboard. For, for this game. Uh, there's only two players right now, Matt and myself. And again, you can remember Matt's score was uh, in the, the blog post was 10 and 0. And the first column is the number of posts on WordPress.com. And the second one is the GitHub issues. And it's in a cool kind of gamey looking font. So let's go look at some code. Um, so like I said, this is all up on GitHub. And I'm not going to go into a, a ton of detail here but because uh, it's kind of boring, but I'll kind of gloss over some things. So up top here, it, essentially what I'm doing is just requiring some, some node packages. So I'm requiring Express and uh, some other little helper functions to make my code prettier and easier, um, and then setting up some stuff about the Express system here. But down here is kind of the, where the, the meat and potatoes of the whole thing start. Um, so uh, here's uh, on these lines, you can see I'm assigning the bearer token to that token that I created using the instructions on my blog. And uh, these config values, um, sorry, I was going to show this file first, are stored in a little config file. So uh, WordPress got Tom token, uh, the WordPress.com site, so that uh, dog food game site that actually is going to store the data so um, all my code knows which site to actually interact with, and the GitHub label. And that's uh, whenever someone creates an issue on GitHub, if it's labeled as a bug, I'm going to give them a point. In the context of the editor game, only when someone created an issue that was labeled editor would I give them a point. So um, here I'm just assigning those to some, some constants so I can use them in my code. And these next few lines, here we're requiring the wpcom.js library and passing in our bearer tokens. So that gives me an authenticated connection to the WordPress.com API. Players is. Uh, a little mapping file, and all it's doing is it's taking GitHub usernames and mapping them to WordPress.com usernames. So when I create an issue on GitHub, I can, I can look up in this simple hash what my WordPress.com username is. If this was a more, you know, bigger application or something that was going to be more realistic and used more often, this probably isn't the best way to do it. But this was a quick and dirty little project, so it would work. Uh, and this little user hash, this, this is a way to map. Um, the WordPress.com webhook sends not the username of the person that created the post of the author. It sends the user ID. So that's another lookup file. But uh, the real important one is this last one, the site variable. And what that's doing 
is it's, it's saying the site that I want to work with via wpcom.js is the one that's in my config file, which is dogfoodgame.wordpress.com. Um, so up here we have some little helper functions, um, but I'm going to skip over those for a second and go down to these three functions right here. So in Express, uh, you, you set up the pages or the routes on your site using this really simple syntax, uh, get, uh, you know, these are kind of restful words, get, so that line's saying, anytime someone that requests the home page, execute this logic. Uh, the next one down is for the GitHub issues. Anytime there is a post, because uh, the, the word, uh, excuse me, the GitHub webhook does a post with the data, execute this function. And then the last one is the WordPress.com function. So uh, this first one here um, is what actually builds, grabs the data that we use to build out the leaderboard page. And so it calls a function called fetch post data, which is back up here. Um, and again, here's this variable called site, and it's, it's grabbing a post list. So this is a function that's on wpcom.js, and it's a shortcut to the WordPress.com API that's going to return a list of posts from that particular blog. Uh, there's a restraint of 100 posts per page, um, but you can, you can override that in, in these options that you pass in. And then uh, for those that aren't kind of familiar with JavaScript, you pass in a callback function, and that's what's executed when the API returns with that data. <laughs> So um, that's how that works, and that's um, essentially, when you call that, you get a list of all the posts back from the API for that given site. So right now, it's just the two posts, one about Matt, one about myself, and you can work with that data then. So um, kind of glossing over some stuff here, but after, after you have that data, um, we, we call render on a file called index, and this is the, the Jade file, this is the markup, and it has some lovely inline CSS. And then down here at the bottom, uh, it creates a table, and it cycles over each one of the players that's returned from the API or posts and spits out the leaderboard. So yeah, really simple stuff. Um, not going to go into too much detail here. But let's go ahead and take a look at one of these more interesting functions here, which is a, a webhook <clears throat> excuse me, that comes back from WordPress.com. So when someone creates a post on Sounds Chewy, I probably should also add some logic in here to send me an email or something or a text message so I can see the new Chewbacca video. Uh, but what it's doing is uh, it's taking the username here that, that's, that gets sent as the post author. It's ensuring that I know who that username is, and it's, it's doing some validation against the request headers to make sure it's a somewhat legit request, though you could still totally spoof this if you wanted to. I'm kind of hoping someone out there is right now. Uh, so, and then once we have that, we call a couple more functions so we know the person's legit. The first function I call up top there, uh, called ensure post, what that is doing is going back out to the WordPress.com API and it's saying, hey, does dog food game have a post for user Matt yet? And if it doesn't have one, it creates a new post for that, for that user. And then after that, the next function, you can see scores.posts plus equals one. So it's incrementing the score count by one point. And then it's calling another one of my help, helper functions, which is update scores. So uh, update scores up here, real fast. Um, here's another, another call out to the WPCOM.js. It's calling post, and it's taking the, the post ID, and it's updating the content. And it, you know, just re really basic stuff. So uh, let's, let's do a demo here, because that's way more exciting than looking code. So here's, uh, here's the super awesome WordPress.com app, and here's the Sounds Chewy page. Actually, let's go look at the leaderboard first. So here's the leaderboard live on Heroku at this very moment. And it, of course, it's going to, Heroku, if you don't know, times out your app if it hasn't been used for a while. Um, so that was it starting back up. So you can see I'm in second place uh, with five posts and one GitHub issue. So if we come back here to WordPress, So I made a, <clears throat> this post called uh, Cat Baca. <laughs> and this, this one was a new one for me last night. Uh, it's, it's really good. So you'll have to check it out because I don't think I have time to play it. But it, it, it's a draft. Well, if we have time or during questions, I'll play it for you all. Um, so I'm going to publish it. Here it goes. Come on, live demo. Yay. OK, so it published. And if we come back over here to our leaderboard, 
Magical! I now have six points. I'm getting closer to Matt. Cool. So um, I'm going to come over here to my uh, GitHub repository that has the webhook set up. Let's create a new issue. More cats, please, seriously. And it's a bug because the site needs more cats. So uh, we created a new bug over here. Let's go back to our leaderboard. Magical internet. Boom, now Matt and I are tied. So that is, is the very basics of this game. Um, so back to how this game kind of worked with the, the editor. Here's the, the leaderboard ha as it looked at the very end of the game. Um, obviously a lot more players, a lot more excitement behind it. Not as much Chewbacca, but still pretty cool stuff. But some big takeaways from this thing. We had 260 people at Automatic play this game. And, and that's 65% that's, uh, of the company, which is, which is just really awesome. Uh, a huge amount of participation. You know, some people only made a post, but uh, I'd say like the top 10 were very competitive. <laughs> it was fun. Um, and overall, they created 2,331 test posts. And these were actual posts that went on sites. Obviously, there was probably some test posts. This doesn't include um, local development posts. So these are actually posts that kind of meant something. Um, but a lot of people actually spent some time to write some really good posts with this. It, it motivated them. And we also had 506 issues created with, and labeled with editor on GitHub. Um, the thing that you can't really see from those numbers is the feedback that I got. So at our grand meetup in October, I got to go around and hand out prizes to people. I made little notebooks to thank them for playing the game to the top 50 people. And everybody I talked to just, just loved the game. They, they, they just had a good time playing it. And as the game was going on, uh, there was obviously some bugs in my code. And some people weren't getting points. So I had people actually report bugs about the game. So they actually cared about this thing. It, it was really cool. So was this, what did, was it gamified? So to me, dog, the dog food game really allowed everybody in the company to kind of be a bigger part of this, in this big project, of editor project. So even though they might not have actually been writing code themselves, they were still a big part of it. And this game kind of brought everybody together around it. Um, the leaderboard definitely provided instant feedback. Um, there was some kind of manual stuff I ha would do to update the post scores. Um, but it was a really good mechanism for people to kind of stay motivated and actually play this game. Uh, bug finding kind of played to people's creativity. So that, that was another game mechanic at play here that made it successful. And of course, this allure of a prize actually added to the fun, but most people told me they didn't really care about the prize. So um, really, what, what this did is it, it had an obstacle. It was making people get out of their daily routine of using P2 or WP admin, but by creating this obstacle, adding rules and these game mechanics, it made this whole thing fun. Um, and there are some things that I would probably do differently the next time. Uh, I would do some more optimizations, like caching some of the results from the API, because it was slow at times. Um, maybe do a different approach on the leaderboard. Um, instead of only just having the, the top list, maybe do a 24-hour leaderboard. So on a given day, people can compete to win, for, win that day. So even if you're down like at number 50 in the list, you can still win a given Monday or something. And also make it easier for other groups with an automatic to start up a game like this to help out test their products too. So I'm going to wrap up um, with, this, with this quote right here from, from Jane again. Uh, you know, whatever you do, if you have a game idea, people are going to come and play it just because people enjoy playing games. And so if you have an idea about some crazy game, or just you know, give it a try. And think about using WordPress because it's there, and the WordPress.com is very easy to interact with. Uh, so if there's any questions, we'll make it a game. You get a pair of Wapu socks if you ask a good question. Thank you. <laughs> Wapu socks, come on. I'm in. Uh, so my question is probably bad because it's anti-game stuff, but I can't help but think something like this could, uh, the concept behind it could benefit uh, a, a site or an app that does some version of progress. I'm thinking like a medical field type thing sure. where you're tracking, you know, somebody's progress through, you know, whatever it may be. That uh, would this same approach go to that, or would you recommend a, you know, another method of uh, you want going some socks? through the process? <laughs> <laughs> you get your choice. Cool, blue ones. Um, so that's a great question. And in Jane McGonigal's book, 
uh, reality is broken. That's a big theme that she talks about. So, uh, and there's some examples in there of, um, I think the game's called Fold It at Home, where it, it does protein folding. Um, and it talks about gamifying things for a greater good. And that's kind of the main concept of her book. So there are some real world examples of that being done. There was another one, uh, a paper in the, the UK that gamified finding um, bad expense charges that, that, uh, that people in parliament had made. So they, they publicized all these documents and had people look through them and try to find where people might have been spending too much money. So definitely, game mechanics can be applied for greater good. Yep, and I think that's her book, Super Better. She talks about that. Yeah, so she has a couple really great books. So check those out. She talks about that. Yeah. So in this example, you're using your own dog food to use WordPress as a database, a data store yes. for leader for the, your leaderboard. Um, dog fooding, dog food. Is there? Yeah, it's Inception. Is there any advantage that you found in doing that? Uh, it was fun. <laughs> um, it was really quick, also, and that's. Uh, Using something, when you, when you can leverage something like a public API to just quickly stash some data like this, uh, and you're familiar with it, because obviously I use WPCOMJS on a daily basis for my work, there was obviously some efficiencies there for me. Um, I don't use Mongo on a daily basis anymore, so I probably would have had to go and look at some documents. But for me, when, it, when I thought about it, I was like, oh yeah, totally, I'm just going to make blog posts about this instead, because I can do it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, definitely fun, uh, and also, think about it, you can just go into the post and edit a score. So when I had buggy, buggy code, I could just, like, I didn't get my point for creating a GitHub issue, I just opened up the post in the editor and uh, updated their score. So, cool. there Thank were some you. nice things like that. I have a quick follow-up. Yeah. Um, what does a cat that makes a Chewbacca sound sound like? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So here's soundschewy.com. I hope the stats blow up. Here we go. I'll play it, and we can take another question. There we go. T-I-L, cats sound like Chewbacca. If you want some socks, you can come get them. Uh, oh, you want them? Okay. You can fight over them. Yeah, what's the question? Um, my, my question is... Um, I'm, get close to the mic, please. I'm kind of like an intermediate WordPress user, uh -huh. but I've brought some of my family members who are just beginning. Yeah. Is there any plugins or any kind of combination that might be something simpler for beginning users to do this with? Well, there's, uh, on the plugin directory, there are some gamification plugins. I looked at them very briefly, and I, I want to say they all interacted with kind of third-party services to provide, like, leaderboards. So you could check those out. Um, so, the, yeah, I, I didn't really look at them, but you might want to check those out, or I'd be happy to show you how to do this. It's, code's out there. It's kind of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Don't forget socks. I don't want to take these home. <laughs> Um, so I'm a writer. I don't actually do much code stuff. Yep. How difficult will this be for someone like me to do to my blog? Or should I just hire someone? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there would be someone here looking for a job. It's open source. Uh, so what, what, maybe you should talk to me afterwards, but we could talk about what exactly you would want to do with the game, and I could probably give you a good idea. Or, was okay, there then. a point, point style system you wanted to do? or? I'm thinking maybe more badges. Okay. I want people to poke around inside my blog and not just look at the home page. Yeah, and uh, the, this, the other book I talked about the, from Yukai Chow, he has a lot of that on his blog too. So I'll, I'll tweet out a link to his blog, though I don't like the design of it. Okay. Um, it he has it really gamified, so when people post a comment, they get a certain number of points and if they tweet about it. So yeah, definitely you can, you can gamify things like that. Fabulous. I want those socks. Okay, come on up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool, thank you so much.